Hey guys, this is Communications. Welcome to another review, this time of World War Z. Uh, 2013 uh, action horror flick um, that I really didn't have any hopes for at all. Um, I'm not one of those people that ever read the book it's based on, so that's not the reason why. Um, because I was afraid it wasn't going to be accurate. Um, because I guess it's not really like the book at all, so I guess if you're fans of the book, you might be disappointed. Um, but I just thought the trailer sucked. I thought they looked bad. Brad put Brad Pitt looked bored. It looked like World War Z looked boring. And CGI zombies and the way that the they piled on top of each other and jumped off a wall like they're lemmings. Yeah, it didn't do anything to sell me. So I really wasn't expecting much from the film at all. Um until recently. Um came out on DVD, found the links online, and thought, why not? You know, I gave Pain and Gain a chance, and it surprised me, so let's give World War Z a shot. And I checked it out, and much like Pain and Gain, it surprised the hell out of me. I really enjoyed the movie. I'd probably say it's in my top three of my favorite movies of the year. So, I, I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. Um, first off, I didn't watch the PG-13 version. So that might be help. Might might have been a little bit of a help. I watched the unrated version, so um, there is a little bit of. I, I guess I can guess there's a little bit of a difference, um, and I'll get into a little bit of those differences soon enough. Um, but really, I was. What impressed me the most about this movie was its relentless pace. It was relentless. It was action packed. It was thrilling from five minutes in. It just kept on coming like the zombies in the movie the film itself took on the persona of the zombies that were just relentlessly attacking people in this movie so the movie just re relentlessly attacks you with action and violence and 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 set pieces and just it goes all over the world and I, I just think it does a really good job you know with the action um it has a little bit of shaky cam but it but it works um, it does a good job carrying the story along, and um, it's really surprising considering how solid the story for me personally is, considering that the whole ending was reshot, uh, because the original ending was Brad Pitt, it, it just what it just felt out, awkward and weird, like Brad Pitt, you know, and his family were dealing with this whole thing with the zombie outbreak from the beginning of the movie, and then at the end of the original cut, he's now Achilles from Troy again. <laughs> kicking zombie ass with the help of uh, a bunch of other uh, freedom fighters or fighter, you know, a bunch of, you know, soldiers, you know, or not really soldiers, but I guess they're soldiers against the zombie army. And it really just didn't fit. And I guess the director and the producers, you know, agreed, so they reshot the whole ending with the whole sequence in the hospital. And that really works. This is a really suspenseful, well-shot uh, sequence, which was a lot better than just a random, you know, bunch of, you know, running, you know, people bashing zombies in the face of maces or something. I mean, it just it just would feel really out of place. Um, but I guess that's how that's how you get your war. <laughs> but really, you know, there's still a little bit of a war here in World War Z. Now, the film as you know, it was released this year, and it was a surprise hit because it didn't start out very well. Um, early box office returns weren't that great, and afraid it's going to flop. And a lot of you know, for a lot of the news trades and people were saying it's going to flop and all that. Thankfully, it didn't. Thankfully, it picked up steam, and it's going to get a sequel. And I think the film does a good job leaving it open for one. Now, the film's directed by Mark Forster. I got to be honest, this is my favorite movie he's directed. I was really surprised by his directing in this because this is the same guy who did Quantum of Solace, which is, in my opinion, one of my least favorite James Bond films. That was a disappointing follow-up to uh, Casino Royale, and I know I'm not the only one. And he did a lot of shaky cam in that, and just really, I don't know, really uneven directing in that movie. Here he has shaky cam, but it works. It's not over over the top like in Quantum of Solace, and it probably benefits that he has a better script too. Even though, surprisingly enough, it's a script that had three writers, Michael Matthew Michael Carnahan, Drew Goddard, and Damon Lindelof. Yeah, the same guy who was responsible for Prometheus. He did a better job here. He didn't end up getting lost. So, 
So basically, um, I'll, I don't. I guess he was brought in to help write rewrites, do some rewrites. And the original story was by Matthew Michael Carnahan and J. Michael Straczynski, which you might, some people might be familiar with. I think he worked on Babylon 5. I think he was a creator of that, if I remember correctly. And it's based on the book World War Z by Max Brooks. Now, the film is produced by Brad Pitt's company. And it also stars Brad Pitt as his character. In, he's a former UN employee named Jerry Lane. His wife, Karen, played by Morelli Enos. Well, I she was all right. I actually, there's nobody in the film I thought was bad. I thought, I thought she did a good job. Uh, Morelli Enos, first time I've ever seen her in a film. Dania and Daniela Kurt, Curtis is a second who is I think I believe is there I believe it's their I believe she's their uh I'm trying to remember who oh she's the she's the warrior chick who I thought kicked a good amount of ass. She's she's got she's she got a ball of shaved head kind of like G.I. Jane and uh, I I liked her Daniel Kurt Curtis says I I'm looking forward to seeing her in other movies. Um also kind of look like a Aaliyah from Star Trek The Motion Picture. Um, James Badge Dale as Captain Speck. Ludi Boken as Jurgen Womburn. Matthew Fox as a parajumper. Just, just parajumper is his name. Doesn't even have a name, it's just parajumper. Uh, Fana Mokaina as Thierry Omuntini. Uh, David Morse as an ex-CIA agent. That was a good role um, by David Morse, who's a really kind of, you know, screwed up looking guy. Uh, looks like he'd been through hell. Uh, Alice Gabio as Andrew Fossenbach. I think he's he's the guy who's supposed to be the savior, and he, he dies in a stupid way. Peter Capaldi is one of the doctors and a few other actors, but uh, you have Sterling Jernis as Constance Lane and Abigail Hargrove as Rachel Lane, uh, the Lane's daughters. Basically, what happens is, like I was saying, the movie starts out with a bang. Starts out. The outbreak is happening in uh, Philadelphia, and uh, basically, um, they're in heavy. They're in traffic. They're just thinking it's regular traffic, and then the zombie outbreak starts happening. Zombies start attacking people, and the zombies are practical makeup mostly, except for a few instances of CGI. And chaos starts spreading everywhere. The chaos theory in effect, and you know that they're you know they basically you know they. Their car gets smacked by a truck. They, they basically manage to get into an, uh, an RV. They, basically, they borrow an RV and they hightail it out of there. And they escape to New York, Newark, and New Jersey. And they take refuge in an, in an apartment, which is a home to a, a couple with their young son, Tommy. Um, then you have UN Deputy Secretary, Gen Secretary General Theory and Wattini, an old friend of Jerry's, sends a helicopter that extracts the lanes of Tommy to a U.S. Navy vessel in the Atlantic, where scientists and military personnel are analyzing the worldwide outbreaks. And before this, though, really clever, you know, a suspenseful scene with the zombies trying to attack uh, Brad Pitt and his family in this apartment complex. I like the way the shots are set up. I like the use of the red lighting. Um, and also in the beginning of the movie, I almost forgot the score by, um, I was really surprised they were able to get this score by Muse. So they used this song called, um, Isolated System. And they used a little bit of it, the little intro of it, which I really like. And it really adds to the beginning of the movie. I really like the opening credits scene. It shows how... It's just a random smorgasbord of television clips showing, you know, our stupidity with reality TV, like clips of Wendy Williams and clips of, you know, lions and clips of, you know, this impending outbreak. And then you get the titles and it's really well done and set up by the Muse score isolated system with this, you know, footage of, you know, U.S. television. And I think it's really well, well, uh, dr the, the opening credits draw you in right from the bat, right off the bat. It's a really clever setup. And a good song by Muse. Although you really do hear that song over and over again throughout the whole movie. Like, it's it's kind of basically the movie score. is just that little bit at the beginning of the song, Isolated System. But I'm okay, because I, I, like I like that song enough anyway. I think Muse is a great band, and I really like the... I like hearing their music in a movie. So anyway, fast-forwarding back into the more, you know, back where it was. Zombies are attacking the apartment, and I like the idea Brad Pitt uses here. He takes uh, magazines and stuff, and he, he uh, basically 
he, he wraps them around himself so he can protect himself from getting bit. Which I like that. I think that's a pretty cool idea. And then I like the way that it's handled after he fights him off and he gets it so his family can get rescued by the helicopter. He thinks he's gotten bit and he's thinking about committing suicide, but he stops for a second because these zombies are fast acting. They bite you when you're 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 turning like in almost no time. You don't have to be dead. You're gonna you're gonna turn. And it's kind of like a virus in that in, in that respect. Uh, a little bit like 28 days later, I guess a little bit. And basically what happens is, you know, he stands there, he thinks he's gotten bit, he thinks he's infected, so he stands over the ledge thinking about jumping, but he pauses for a second, and then he realizes he's not, he's not going to turn, and I like that, I like that setup, so it showed that he had, you know, smarts, and used his head instead of just killing himself without even thinking about it, you know, and putting his family at a disadvantage, and he ends up, you know, escaping from the zombies or chasing after him, gets on the helicopter of his family, and then they head over to the the aircraft carrier. On this aircraft carrier there's this esteemed viro virologist, Dr. Andrew Fossenbach, uh, Fossbach, and um, that's the guy who's played by um, Ailes Gabel. And this guy supposedly, had, he, he basically says that the plague is a virus and that the development of vaccine depends on finding the origin of it. I think it maybe started in Africa, or might have started over here. Something again might have been dealing with monkeys again, something like that, or birds. I don't remember exactly how it was transmitted. Um, and then Jerry reluctantly agrees to help Fossbach find the outbreak source after it's made made clear that he and his family will be removed from the ship if he does not. Um, kind of an asshole move, but it's understandable that the ship, though, we're going to get rid of people who aren't supposed to be there because we don't have room. And enough food and, and, and enough places to put them. Because if he didn't go on the mission, they were going to send his family back to Newark, basically get eaten by zombies. Uh, Jerry and Fassenbach, they fly up to Camp, Camp Humphreys, a military base in South Korea, where they're attacked and rival by zombies. Really well done scene, I like that. Uh, zombies are attacking, and uh, really exciting, tense sequence. There's a lot of moments, just fast and furious action, action uh, piled on top of more action. That's really what I really liked about this movie. It's pretty much an action movie first and a horror movie second. And that, and it just, I also think it does a good enough job with the drama, and a good enough job with the character development to make you care about Brad Pitt and his family. So then, you know, the events that ha occur and that happen to him, you, you give a shit enough, so then it makes these action sequences even more exciting. So basically what happens is, this is when Fossenbach, the super smart, you know, virus, you know, expert, dies like a dumbass, he slips and basically falls and hits his head, you know, I, I think he slips or shoots himself, or he slips, shoots himself in the head, or he slips and falls on, onto the ramp that's leading up into the plane, and he dies. So, some ex, some super sci, super intelligent scientist you got right there. He has he has shitty hand to eye coordination. He can't can't even run without falling on his, killing his ass, killing himself. Great, that's some savior. So basically, he 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 okay, yeah he accidentally discharged his gun. He slipped and shot himself in the head. So then after being rescued by this team surviving personnel led by Captain Speak, who I like I like that I like that actor. Um, up in spec, James Badgedale, and um, Jerry learns that the infection was introduced to the base by its doctor, who was ultimately incinerated by a soldier with a bad leg, and the infected ignored. You have a former CIA operative who was imprisoned at the base, tells Jerry to go to Jerusalem, where he says a safe zone has been maintained by the Israeli Mossad before the outbreak's official acknowledgement. So it's not a monkey, it's some kind of experiment or whatever that, that I think it was, I think it did start in Africa, though. I really, I think that's where it started, if I remember correctly. Um, so before the outbreak's official acknowledgement, um, as Jerry and his team had, had biked back to their aircraft, zombies attack, kill several soldiers, and in fact, Captain Speck, who commits suicide to prevent himself from turning. Jerry and his pilot escape. That scene, and it was well done, because I like Captain Speck. He was only on it for a little bit, in the, in the film for a little bit, and when, you know, you knew him enough to, you know, there's a cool guy who, you know, really wanted to do his best for his country, and ultimately he gets bit, and he does. He just has to do the hardest thing in the world and just kill himself. It was pretty tragic, I thought anyway, because I liked the guy. So anyway, after 
Captain Speck shoots himself, Jerry and the pilot, they head over to Jerusalem. And this is where you have the stuff where you have these walls. They built it basically built these giant walls that keep the zombies out. And it's just really just eye jaw dropping to see this just massive scale of all these just hundreds upon hundreds of zombies that are just behind this wall. And this is where you get the shot you see in the trailer, which didn't look very good in the trailer, but it looks a lot better here on the DVD or on the Blu-ray to be on it, you know, to be exact, where, you know, the zombies are powering on top of each other and getting jumping over the wall. And the only reason why they're jumping over the wall is because you have these um, Israeli, you know, women or, you know, who are deciding that they're, they're auditioning for American Idol right now and are singing really loudly with, uh, you know, with microphones. And that just based because the zombies react to sound and so it just they bail pile on the top of each other and jump over the wall and everything was fine until they decided to start singing and celebrate you know like might as well have started breaking out and cooling the gang you know celebrate good times come on oh zombies are gonna be eating us now celebrate good times oh shit the, the zombies are coming oh my god I mean, this is stupid really so you would think that they would know that they, you know, sound, I, I don't know, they were smart enough to build a wall to keep them out, but nope, nope. So safe zone is ruined because the zombies can chime over the wall, and they start attacking people. And I like the setup where they have these cages basically on top of these uh, uh, walkways, so the zombies are grabbing at people. And this is a scene, this is during the during the scene, this is when uh, the, the, you have a, uh, basically this uh, character, um, this woman, um, i trying to remember, Sejin, she basically ends up, uh, this is the this is the actress who I really thought she, she kicked a lot of ass. She reminded me of uh, Jeanette Goldstein a little bit, sort of her demeanor from Aliens of Asquez. And she basically gets bit on the arm, she gets bit on the hand, and, and Jerry quickly amputates her hand. And this is a difference I, I guarantee is probably different in the unrated version version of the PG-13. The rated version I saw, she, he literally cut, you see her hand get cut off and blood, practical blood spurts. So I seriously doubt that was in the PG-13 version. I think there's a few more blood spurts too when zombies bite people or they get shot. So, so you know, give it that. So basically what happens is he, he uh, amputates her arm, her hand, and then Jerry and Sagan then escape on a commercial airline liner as Israel is overrun by zombies just in the nick of time. I know people have said that it seems like a lot of things are convenient, uh, but I, I think it, I didn't think so, because in this scene, like he just barely makes it on a plane, the last plane that flies out. Well, he tried to make it to one plane, but they couldn't. You know, the zombies were, you know, were in the way. And tried, I think it was like the third try that they finally got onto the plane. So it's not like the first try that they got onto the plane and got out of there. So I don't see how it's that convenient. But basically then what happens is Jerry contacts Theory and the airliner is diverted to the WHO facility in Wales. Uh, then there's a stowaway zombie who's in the in the coach. He attacks in midair, which is a tense sequence. Because think about it. it. It's really a terrifying thought to be in an enclosed space with a zombie. Especially, I mean, in coach with a zombie that one bite turns everybody into zombies. You know, the, it just spreads like wildfire. You're just now stuck in this small enclosed space. Not only are you stuck in this small enclosed space with zombies, you know, trying to eat you, but you also are, are in midair in an airplane. There's no escape. So basically, Jerry ends up basically doing a last, last resort, and he throws a grenade, and it blows out, you know, basically blows all the infected zombies out of the aircraft, but it also causes the plane to crash. And I guess it's kind of convenient the way that he is, you know, he and Sejin walk out of this alive, I guess, because this is a pretty bad crash. And basically all Brad Pitt has is like a little um, metal shrapnel on his stomach. And, but, they, so they're, but they're alive. And Jerry and Sejin then proceed to the WHO facility where Jerry loses consciousness for three days. Because um, they have to call him, I guess. And he explains to the remaining WHO staff a theory that he has, based on the people who have seen the zombies ignore. Which I like this idea. I think it's really, and I think this was something, once again, that was added to the ending. It wasn't originally there in the original 
draft in the original version of the film, the original edit. And it really adds an interesting aspect to the movie. That the zombies, his, you know, uh, Jerry's theory is that zombies, they don't attack the infected. They don't attack, you know, people who are sick. Because there was a kid who had, like, cancer or, or some leukemia or whatever. It was really sick. And the zombies just walked around him. And that's when he noticed that, okay, that might be a reason why the zombies, you know, won't attack people. It, they won't bite or, you know, attack the seriously injured or terminally ill. Since they would be unsuitable hosts for viral reproduction. And then Jerry suggested they test this by deliberately infecting somebody with one of the facility's pathogens. But... Of course, these uh, these uh, pathogens are in a wing that's already overrun by zombies, so that adds an extra uh, added problem. And that's I thought it was a really well done, suspenseful, harrowing, nice, really well done scene where Jerry goes out on his own. Sejin, they lead the WHO, the, they uh, they and the WHO doctor go and get try to get a pathogen, but they're separated along the way. Jerry continues to go to the pathogen vault while Sejin and the doctor return to the main building. Um, but Jerry's in alone in this room with these zombies outside. And although the zombies kind of communicate kind of like the predator with clicks. You know, like... <laughs> um, and um, basically... And the practical makeup effects, too, on the zombies. Uh, the, the film really did try not to have as much CGI as possible. Only in things that made a lot of... They made sense. Like, you know, the zombies... Thousands upon zombies powering on top of each other. That's understandable why that's in CGI. But regular zombies and scenes with Brad Pitt and a lot of... You know, were usually practical. Which I like that. And basically what happens is... A zombie corners Jerry inside the vault. So then Jerry basically thinks on its feet and injects himself with whatever the fuck he can find, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, whatever disease it may be, uh, but a deadly but treatable virus, hopefully it doesn't kill him, and he opens the vault, thereby testing his theory, and the zombie ignores him. And so, basically he walks, parts the zombie sea, and then walks into the, gets into the main wing, and then uh, everybody rejoices and is happy that he's successful, and he gets inoculated against the virus. Jerry and his family are then reunited in a safe zone in, in Nova Scotia. A vaccine is derived from deadly pathogens, and, and then it's developed to issue the troops to battling the affected, which this is a little bit of it. You see a little bit of scenes that were cut out from the original ending here. Uh, the, the street war with the zombies acting as kind of a camouflage. And the vaccine also helps the survivors to reach quarantine zones. Human offensives begin against the zombies, that's when you have those scenes, and hope is restored. And then the movie ends with, you know, Jerry basically saying, this isn't the end, not even close. Our war has just begun. And, yeah, that's World War Z. And I really, actually, I think it was a really excellent movie. That was one of the best movies of the year. It really surprised me. There was a really great blend of action and horror, and uh, did a good job with the drama you know, as well. Uh, Brad Pitt did a good job. He didn't look bored like he did in the trailer. This is just another example of a movie that had a shitty advertising campaign. Hollywood is really dropping the ball with these ads. Um, they need to start being, I don't, stop being lazy asses with your movie trailers, because I'm missing out on good movies to see in the theater because I see the trailer and I, I, it doesn't look good to me. So, um, step up your game when it comes to editing your trailers. Um, if I could do a better job, then you need to, I don't know, fire the old guys, hire some new people. Just It just isn't working because that's two movies. Pain and Gain, it surprised me. I really enjoyed it. And World War Z, I, you know, I, I like Pain and Gain. I definitely say I like World War Z a lot more. Uh, was, I thought it was really exciting, thrilling, enthralling, you know, you know, extravaganza, you know, a blockbuster. It was it was definitely a movie that I would want to add to my collection, and I will eventually, as soon as I can find it for somewhat cheap. So anyway, I, I really don't know what to say about World War Z, except um, I'm really looking forward to the sequel, and uh, I guess I'm a rated out of five stars. I'm going to give it four and a half. Only problems I might have a little bit I really don't have that many problems. Just I kind of didn't buy the plane crash scene. That's really about it for me personally. And maybe a few pacing issues here and there, like in the middle or 
or the virus guy being a fucking dumbass. Like, why did he have to die that way? But other than that, uh, I thought it was really good. It was a really good movie. Um, I recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. If you had your doubts with this movie, like I did, check it out. Um, because it proved me wrong. Uh, it might not prove you wrong, and, it, and that's fine. I mean, if there are people out there that hate this movie, that's cool too. But I, I really enjoyed it. So anyway, I really don't want to say, folks, except thanks for watching my review of World War Z. And I'll see you guys later. See ya.